About 5% of the filtered sodium load is reabsorbed along the distal convoluted tubule and 4% is reabsorbed along the cortical collecting duct. Sodium reabsorption along the distal convoluted tubule occurs transcellularly via sodium chloride co-transporter or NCC co-transporter, which transports one sodium ion and one chloride ion from the lumen into the cell. This type of transport is considered electroneutral because there is no gain of a positive or negative charge. Once inside the cell, sodium and chloride ions are transported out across the basolateral membrane by the sodium-potassium ATPase and chloride ion channel, respectively. Mutations that lead to the functional loss of the NCC co-transporter are referred to as Gittleman syndrome, which results in decreased sodium reabsorption and increased naturesis. This is clinically relevant because the administration of thiazides produces a similar effect. Thiazides are a class of diuretics commonly used to treat hypertension and edema. They work by inhibiting NCC-dependent sodium reabsorption along the distal convoluted tubule, which can reduce systolic and diastolic blood pressure by 10 and 5 millimeters of mercury, respectively. It does this by reducing the extracellular fluid volume. Sodium reabsorption along the cortical collecting duct occurs transcellularly as well via epithelial sodium channels, or ENAC, which are located in the apical membrane of principal cells. Neighboring beta intercalated cells do not reabsorb sodium, rather they reabsorb chloride via the bicarbonate chloride exchanger, which is referred to as pendrin. We'll talk more about that in another lesson. Sodium reabsorption along the cortical collecting duct varies based on the number and activity of ENAC, as well as the luminal sodium concentration. Aldosterone is by far the most significant regulator of ENAC number and activity, while arginine vasopressin, or AVP, is known to increase ENAC activity. However, its physiological significance remains less clear. As sodium is reabsorbed by ENAC, it creates a lumen negative potential, which establishes a driving force for the secretion of positively charged ions like potassium. This is important because like the cells in the thick ascending limb, principal cells express potassium ion channels in the apical and basolateral membrane. Because of this, anything that increases ENAC-dependent sodium reabsorption can lead to increased potassium secretion and hypokalemia. For example, hyperaldosteronism, which is the excess release of aldosterone from the adrenal cortex, leads to increased sodium reabsorption and hypokalemia. Likewise, Little syndrome, which are mutations that lead to increased ENAC number, lead to increased sodium reabsorption and hypokalemia. Also, the use of diuretics like acetosolamide, furosemide, and thiazide lead to increased sodium delivery along the collecting duct. The increase in luminal sodium leads to increased ENAC-dependent sodium reabsorption and hypokalemia. This is one of the reasons why potassium supplements are administered in conjunction with these diuretics and why they are also referred to as non-potassium sparing diuretics. Conversely, diuretics that specifically inhibit ENAC are referred to as potassium sparing diuretics. Inhibition of ENAC not only decreases sodium reabsorption, it decreases the driving force for potassium secretion as well. Amiloride and spironolactone are two types of potassium sparing diuretics. Amiloride blocks ENAC by occupying the channel pore, while spironolactone blocks the effects of aldosterone by blocking aldosterone from binding its nuclear receptor, which leads to a reduction in ENAC number and activity. In summary, sodium is reabsorbed transcellularly along the distal convoluted tubule by sodium chloride or NCC co-transporters. The NCC co-transporter is inhibited by thiazides. Sodium is reabsorbed transcellularly along the cortical collecting duct by principal cells via the epithelial sodium channel or ENAC. ENAC-dependent sodium reabsorption creates a lumen negative potential which promotes potassium secretion. Aldosterone increases ENAC-dependent sodium reabsorption by increasing the number and activity of ENAC. And excessive ENAC-dependent sodium reabsorption can lead to hypokalemia.